I will request these speakers once again uh, to finish their presentations in the allotted time so that the chair uh, can open the floor uh, to the audience also. I now hand over the proceedings to the chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm uh, Kamlesh Bajaj, and um, I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, such a large audience from BIMSTAC countries uh, is here. And uh, I extend a very warm welcome to all my fellow panelists here on the dais. And we will try and uh, cover the topic which is today so very important. Because today's life, industry, governance, mm -hmm. social life, business, commerce, none of this is uh, conceivable without uh, uh, cyberspace. And which of course is moving more and more into the uh, mobile world. But then along with this, uh, we are also seeing, as one would expect, that in the physical world there are crimes, there are problems, and we have a similar thing in a more larger scale uh, in the cyberspace. Because it is uh, really the speed of uh, movement of uh, data information, uh, which is available both to the parties which are trying to conduct business through governance and the same tools are available at the same scale and speed uh, to uh, the criminal world also. So cyber uh, security has emerged as a major discipline which will continue uh, more in the future as more and more people get connected. And today we have nearly uh, two thirds of the world connected and not just the people but it is the devices also what we all know as Internet of Things. And those devices are also being uh, connected uh, to all of us uh, through the processes of uh, industrial production or a smart city or uh, any such thing that you talk about. And uh, future is something which is emerging as driverless cars and uh, many other kind of applications which are there. And the speed and low latency is something which will carry us into the realm of uh, uh, what has been uh, fantasy so far. And we will see that uh, reality very soon in terms of uh, an entire video being downloaded in one second. Or a car which will get to know within uh, one millisecond whether it is about to uh, hit another one. It should uh, stop, it should uh, move, it should change the track. And in terms of the uh, global positioning system also, uh, of uh, how this will be handled. Now the uh, challenge of uh, cyber threats is simply because the internet uh, platforms, ICT platforms, which have been there uh, in the PC world, then they moved on to the mobiles, same kind of operating systems, same kind of databases uh, have been uh, moved into the uh, mobile world also. So which means that the threats which are there, basic threats in the internet protocol, TCP, IP stack, that they are now there uh, in the mobile world also. And uh, sadly or unfortunately, in the IoT devices also, because they have only picked up that particular communication stack and then the vulnerabilities are fully there. And uh, today the IoT devices are getting connected uh, on the experimental 5G networks or even on the existing 4G networks which are uh, smart uh, and uh, fast enough with, uh, you'll be shocked, some uh, 60 to 70 million IoT devices which have come from the vendors with the factory listed passwords which are known to the attackers also. And such devices have been uh, found. They're all sitting there. So I think we are trying to increase, increase our productivity and efficiency but at the cost of uh, cyber threats and cyber attacks. So it is this kind of a scenario that uh, we need to handle. So we need to handle this with uh, uh, security. How can we make uh, things more secure? How can we enhance uh, cyber hygiene? Because attacks are there and attacks will always continue. It is not that uh, uh, if a crime has been prescribed as murder, murders have come down in the physical world, they have not although the laws are there. So we will have laws and processes 
and uh, the world is trying to grapple with that at uh, various levels, including at the United Nations, but grouping such as this also. So it's very important to see that uh, we are all gathered here and we have to see what we can do at the regional level. While we understand that uh, global cooperation is a must at the global level in terms of laws and so on, but we have to explore what we should be doing at the regional level. So I think with this introduction, uh, I will uh, call upon uh, our panelists. And as we go along, uh, I would like uh, to request all of you to engage uh, in uh, questions to each panelist when they end, or maybe towards the end, it depends upon you. So the uh, panel which is gathered here is uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, I will invite uh, Mr. Abu Salam Muhammad uh, Yusuf uh, for his uh, first uh, observation. So each of you will have a 10 minutes slot to present and then uh, we will have the uh, question and answer session. I will not read out the bio because it is all there. That will take away time from us. So with this, I hand over to Mr. Abu Salah Mohammed. Thank you, sir, and <coughs> respected chair of the session. Uh, respected Arvind <coughs> Gupta sir and distinguished participants. Good morning to all. Uh, as Chair has mentioned, the uh, issue of cybersecurity as well as managing cyberspace is becoming a challenge for all the countries. Uh, as we know that all the countries are expanding their technological developments, we need it for our development, but on the other hand, the security challenges which are coming for almost all the countries, it is also very important to address the issues. The issue is that uh, there is a penetration of cyber technology in South Asia as well as in the Beamstake countries also. And the problem with the cyber space is it is a borderless space. So when you talk to manage border, it is difficult. No country can manage its border on the issue of cyberspace. Anyone may be too far from us, but he can attack in our technological uses. On the other hand, the technology is taking for us new opportunities, but at the same time, it is also new challenge for us to ensure our security in social level, political level, economic level, as well as development issues. Uh, in the context of BIMS Tech in 2017, first in the security advisors meeting, they have raised the issue and uh, con concerns that how to manage the issue. So my presentation would focus on securitization of cyberspace in BIMS Tech, uh, regulation and capacity building. My point is that uh, there is a, when we talk about the regional arrangement, we need some regulations, how to regulate it regionally, as well as how, how can we ensure our capacity building from a regional perspective? Because nationally, all the countries have their mechanisms, but when we go for regional framework, there, we, there is a challenge to ensure issues like norms building, which data we can share and which data we may not. It is a difficult situation for many countries. When you talk about the cyberspace, it is called that the fifth domain of warfare in modern world after land, air, sea, and space. As uh, I'm talking about the <coughs> opportunities of cyberspace, particularly technological development, it is one way, uh, the modern economy is a data-driven economy. It is said that data will be the king who, do, who will dominate data, who will dominate the world economy. It is estimated that by 2023, cybersecurity industry will be owed to $639 billion. So it is going to dominate in the world economy also. And as you all know, there is an increasing trend in the BIMSTEC countries of technological development. And my country, Bangladesh, also has taken a digital Bangladesh policy. So our uh, development process also linked to the expansion of technology in the country. And in modern day, technology is linked to the creation, innovation, and development. Uh, not only that, cyberspace is becoming a source of job. Uh, all the countries of Beamstick have a plan to job creating by technological expansion. 
So in that context, um, when we talk about the threats, what types of threats are coming? It is a threat for a nation state because it is said that some of the countries using cyber weapons or weaponizing cyberspace to attack other countries geopolitically. As we all know, there is a saying that uh, Russia intervened in the United, Nations, United States election. So uh, they are talking it is a, it is a part of very, par very much part of national security also. And cyber criminals are using this space for their profit. So um, there are many criminal activities that are going in the cyberspace. The, there are many hacktivists, we call them. They are expanding their, are spreading their ideological issues. And as it was discussed in the, in yesterday also, terrorist groups are using, using this cyberspace for their ideological motivation and violence ideologies. Some, sometimes thrill seekers are also there. They want to be satisfied that they are doing it. So for some people, maybe it is a thrilling or satisfactory, but for others, it is devastating for them. And um, for, the, for the countries, um, uh, at the same time, some of the contents come in social media or in other spaces, which is a major security concern for the, uh, uh, in national level. So it is part of a national security, it is part of societal security, it is part of individual security also. Many individual can be, uh, I mean, many contents come when it comes in the uh, social media, in other media, it, it creates a problem. So cyber, uh, cyber space is a broader area, but at the same time, security's dimension is also very uh, interesting and widened area. Some of the new developments we have seen that there is a cryptocurrency and crypto marketing. Drug users uh, uh, use these types of, I mean, uh, trafficking for humans, uh, trafficking, they use this currency. It is not a normal currency, rather by sending a message, they use this. And we have seen that it is reported that uh, in the drug trafficking between in the Bangladesh, Myanmar border also, they are using these types of uh, cryptocurrency. For the security practitioners, it is sometimes difficult to monitor and target and identify these problems. Uh, it was also discussed in the yesterday that the dark web, uh, it is very difficult when they spread radicalization, hate speech, and fake news in this area. It is becoming a challenge for nation states to monitor these issues. And they are developing some uh, systems, as uh, Chair has mentioned, we are entering in a, uh, a in a era where Internet of Things, IoT, is coming to be an important issue for Internet users as well as for development purposes. But in that context, when a hacker or a, or a cyber criminal will act to manipulate this process, it will be a disaster for an individual as well as for a state also. And uh, they can uh, manipulate your data. Maybe in your bank you have an account, so they can manipulate this data and it will be a problem. Uh, we have seen in Bangladesh such cases. And uh, not only a state, the private companies also are targeted by this way. So it is not only a security concern for a state, rather private sector also fearing how to handle these issues. Two examples I can give. One is uh, Bangladesh Bank haste, as you all know, in February 4, 2006, the uh, Bangladesh, they, uh, sir. Yeah. 2016, sir. Uh, 2016, uh, February 4, 2016, a group of hackers sent message to the uh, US Reserve Bank of USA and um, they sent money to uh, Sri Lanka as well as in Philippines. It became an uproar how this happened. So it was a mechanism of the uh, um, security, uh, I mean, cyber criminals, they did it. It was a challenge for Bangladesh how to handle this issue. And um, second example I want to give in uh, 2017, attackers spread to 30, 130,000 systems in more than 100 countries at a time. But still, it is not discovered that from which country, from where cyber attackers did it. And some blame it is Russia, some blame it is China. So it is difficult to manage in that way. Uh, uh, cyber threats are coming, a threat for all the countries of the world. <coughs> when from a theoretical perspective, I, uh, we talk about the securitization in BIM state countries. As we all know, security is a very integral part of modern day development. 
and um, uh, when it um, when it is uh, we talk about securitization, it needs that policy makers have to come forward uh, how sensitive it is as well as they need to develop policies, uh, legal frameworks, and uh, setting the norms considering everyday's context. And as I have mentioned, the first national security chiefs of the BIMSTEC countries in 2017 highlighted the emerging threats in cyberspace. Uh, they have proposed for a three-day workshop on cybersecurity in BIMSTEC countries held in, it was held in New Delhi in 2018. The workshop highlighted the necessity of developing effective cyber security mechanisms in BIMSTEC countries. Um, there are, um, the, the process is also uh, going in the negotiation process, but uh, it is not yet uh, we have achieved any document or how to cooperate on the issues. There are uh, recommendations for uh, cooperation on information sharing as well as uh, developing some norms in this regard but progress is not um, achieved yet. If we can refer to some of the developments in the regional framework uh, for European Union, European Union um, completed or developed a EU Cybersecurity Act in 2019. So they have set some of the norms how to develop regional frameworks. The European Union Agency for Cybersecurity was established to cooperate and coordinate the cyber threats in regionally and um, Council of European Convention on Cybersecurity, they have developed it in 2001, but they have also, uh, 2019 Act came in that connection and they have made some changes also. Uh, our neighboring organization, I would say ASEAN also has a ASEAN Cyber Capacity Program, ACCP in 2016, and ASEAN Cybersecurity Cooperation Strategy 2017. Uh, Thailand, as member of the uh, BIMSTEC country, they are also part of that um, framework. The African Union also developed a framework they called African Union Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection. African unions, uh, they have, when they were developing this um, convention, they are also, um, I mean, uh, connecting how their local issues are related with the uh, cybersecurity framework. So having said all this, uh, I would like to focus on in the context of BIMSTEC, what would be the challenges and what are the, what are the things we need to uh, address or consider for cybersecurity mechanism in BIMSTEC countries. Firstly, the regulation mechanism, uh, it would be the norm setting would be a challenge. The way Bangladesh uh, looks the issues, maybe not the other countries, and uh, the data Bangladesh may try to share, uh, will consider to share other countries may not and, uh, agree on these issues. And this is not in the context of BIMSEC or South Asia or Southeast Asia, rather European countries also faced a lot of problems to reach in a norm setting framework. And when you talk about regional framework, we have to harmonize our uh, legal frameworks within the country and beyond the country. That would be a great challenge. Uh, we may say that we need to develop a convention or act, but at the same time, how do we will uh, um, develop a harmonized legal frameworks? That would be a um, challenge. And uh, the institutional mechanisms, every country has developed its homegrown institutions. There are security forces that are engaged there. So um, when, which institution will cooperate in which way, who will share data, uh, in, the, in the practical level that needs to be uh, considered and that needs for um, further discussion. And um, at the same time, the standards of implementation <coughs> framework, the European, in European um, Act, they have developed an uh, implementation framework for their countries, but uh, how the countries will come forward for implementation framework, that will be also a very uh, interesting part. And in this uh, issue, in regulation factor, confidence building measures. If I share a data with my neighboring country or my countries, how uh, uh, that country will use it or how they will, um, th there are some strategic concerns. So how they will use it, that types of confidence would be a major challenge. And uh, lastly, when you talk about the <coughs> capacity building, it is also important that uh, technological know-how, as it was discussed yesterday also, that we need uh, millions of experts who will able to handle this technology to monitor cyberspace 
uh, to be more adapted uh, to um, find out the problems and lacunas. So human resource management as well as um, mobilization of human resource as well as technological know-how, training people for technological know-how would be a challenge. And uh, the issue of awareness building also a challenge. Uh, I mean, millions of people are using technology, but uh, how to handle it, how to ensure his security, or how to handle, uh, uh, particularly if a hacker changes a Facebook uh, password, then he gives a status and that creates a huge problem socially as we have seen in Bangladesh um, also. So it is, it is emerging. Okay, sir. And um, the, there is a huge financial investment is also necessary when you talk about the cyberspace. So how governments, nations, uh, come forward to invest in this area would be a challenge. Uh, the intelligence mechanism or intelligence <coughs> capacity is also necessary. And uh, there is also demand for academic curricula in cybersecurity study. How, uh, how BIMSTEC countries can come forward in this uh, way would be a challenge. So my focus is like that when you talk about the cybersecurity challenge, uh, we need to securitize it um, uh, regionally and for development activities we have to continue our uh, use of technology but at the same time uh, we have to come forward with um, effective regulation mechanism and as well as we have to focus on capacity building, uh, regionally capacity building to monitor and address the emerging challenges of cyber security. Yeah which will continue our development process. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> I think we will have the question answer towards the end only and let the presentations be over. Uh, I will now request uh, uh, Ms. Radhika Aurari from Bhutan to give her views. And request you to confine mm -hmm. to 10 minutes, please. <laughs> I, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> yes, we'll do that. Uh, very good morning. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, BIMSTEC and VIA for having us here. It's a pleasure being part of a very important discussion. Uh, I would be discussing on what Bhutan, how Bhutan is uh, handling the cybersecurity issue, being a very small economy with just about 700,000 people, not as, not as big as even an organization in some of our country, BIMSTEC countries. Uh, and also uh, ICT in our country is not driven by private sector. Private sector is very, very small in our country. Uh, forget about the security. I, ICT itself is a big initiative by the government, uh, still too tough to be uh, accepted by people and private sector. Uh, am I not heard? Am I audible enough? <laughs> okay, so sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be discussing uh, some of the ways we are looking forward and some of the activities that we have taken up to fight uh, cyber security in our country are very small initiatives. We haven't invested so much in cyber security yet, uh, like uh, some of other countries. Uh, so some of the activities that we have taken forward, uh, we all of us would deny to accept, but uh, I feel human error is the biggest uh, factor in cyber security. How many of us spend a day without using technology today? None, right? Even a cowboy in the village uh, uses technology every day with uh, instant messaging apps like WeChat with voice recording. Do they realize that their information that they feel private isn't private? We talk about big, big security concerns, but do we take care of small things? How many of us take care of the passports of our phone? Do we leave them open? Yes, because we feel we are not the victim, right? And if educated lords like us feel that way, the innocents back at village who are not even literate, how do they protect themselves? What type of awareness mechanisms do we design to protect them? Because the same contents that we have, we, talk, we are talking to the ICT literate people or the literate people do not work with, the countrymen who are not even educated. So these are very big challenges in our country because population isn't literate. Uh, senior citizens are not literate, and they are using technology because it has become so convenient for them to connect to people or get their job done. So uh, cybersecurity is very new in our country, as the ICT itself is, okay? and uh, we started with the uh, Bhutan Computer Incidents Response Team with just five people, five years back when I just joined my job. 
So uh, since then, our main focus has been in correcting the human error because it requires very less investment and with very big impact. Uh, whatever uh, hi-fi uh, infrastructure that you put in place, uh, very big fancy uh, firewalls, uh, network rules, uh, application security, but with a single email, if a user clicks on a phishing email, all of your protection is just gone. And you have put in so much in protecting the core network, but you haven't thought of your users. So we have started with educating our users. Uh, we have conducted our awareness programs for all of the district uh, government officials. Uh, now we are targeting uh, young stars, schools and uh, education system, and to colleges. Uh, we want to ensure that a kid who starts using mobile, uh, today it's very surprising a one-year kid knows how to open YouTube and view videos that he wants to view, right? He doesn't even know how to speak, but knows how to use mobile phones. So. We want to make sure that we start educating them about the risks of using those technologies from very start of their education. We're working with the uh, Ministry of Education and uh, Royal University of Bhutan uh, to ensure that we come up with uh, some sort of awareness programs or make security a part of their education system from, ve from very young age so that they understand that uh, technology is not just about uh, playing games or being online and chatting with some random strangers, right? They could uh, victimize you because young stars are really emotionally weak and human weakness is the biggest weakness. I feel none of the software vulnerabilities are as big as human vulnerabilities. They are easily exploited uh, and uh, that's why we, our main focus is on building it and we are working closely with the uh, Ministry of Education. Also, uh, the ICT sector in our country has never had a security mindset. The government has built all the ICT infrastructure reaching every corner of the country. We have e-community centers in uh, all of the 205 small blocks that we have in the country. But uh, security has never been thought of uh, until BTZ came into place in 2016. So we are also in the process of training our uh, ICT officials <coughs> in security. Uh, teaching them how to protect their network systems, how to develop softwares in a better way, uh, following secure coding practices. This, had, this has been enabled by support from uh, international organizations like APT, ITU, EPINIC, uh, Asia Connect. So for us, regional cooperation has always been uh, go to our heart because we don't have financial uh, support uh, we, don't, we are not economically so viable to have a big investment in any of the fields and there are lots of other prioritized areas which the country has to work on with a very small economy. So we have always looked forward for international support in any of the areas and uh, we, are, we have been lucky enough to receive their support till now. Uh, and uh, when it comes to building an eco cyber security ecosystem, uh, we do not have a cyber, single cybersecurity professional in our country, you might not believe it, but it's true. It's all the ICT officers and cybersecurity is very badly misunderstood. I'm not sure about other beamster countries, but uh, it's felt in our country that our ICT professional is responsible for anything and everything related to technology. And uh, cybersecurity itself is a very big field and Cybersecurity and ICT, uh, when a single person handles it, they miss out uh, the security part because they feel whatever they have done, they have done to the best, right? And it's only five of us today who are talking about security in our country. We look after the entire country's infrastructure. Uh, from five of us, uh, only two of us are technical people. Uh, others are looking into policy. So it's a big challenge to our country. And uh, we don't have private sector driven, not absolute. No one is looking into cybersecurity. Private sector isn't even thinking about it, I, I'm sure. So even building capacity of uh, critical sectors like bank, ISPs, it's all the government uh, doing it. Uh, we, are, we have been trying to involve the private sectors, the banks, the critical infrastructures, though we haven't defined it, but we are ensuring that all the critical sectors like education, the hydropower, uh, what's that, uh, banking sectors, ISPs are involved in all of the security initiatives that we take. Uh, we are planning to have CII uh, frameworks and identifying them in a few years time. Uh, also, uh, because there aren't anyone who is uh, uh, 
become confident about security, we also uh, develop benchmarks for, for instance, for operating system, and uh, we provide them a ready-to-use template uh, operating system, which can be used for deploying services. We do it using international best practices. Like there are lots of resources online, right? If we are really willing to work towards, uh, CIS has a very good collection of benchmark uh, for every uh, operating system, for every services, for every devices out there. So we use other resources like that. Uh, and these are some of the initiatives that we have been taking. Uh, we also uh, do vulnerability assessment before any system goes into production to ensure that at least the long uh, lagging back vulnerabilities aren't there. So maybe I'm already short of time. So the collaborations I look forward for, uh, Bhutan does not have any uh, labs for analysis, uh, post analysis. We are completely doing the things that we're doing today using open source tools. Uh, I would appreciate if we collaborate like the hackers do to build a shared infrastructure for analysis, have a shared group of people uh, who can do analysis when it's out of our country's capacity. So if we pull resources together, I think we can build a state of art uh, facility for ourselves. Uh, also, uh, I feel there is a very big need for regional cooperation, technical cooperation I'm talking about. I think lots of meetings have happened, lots of talks have happened, but what's coming out there out of those meetings? Are we cooperating really when it comes to technical solutions? Why don't we develop benchmarks? Someone develops on Linux, someone develops on Windows, and we share with each other how much resources would we save. Maybe we should start thinking of cooperating in terms of technical measures. Uh, with this, I end here. I had a lot to say, but time is done. So thank you so much. I'll, I'll change the order slightly, and I requested uh, Subimal to come at the end. So I'm now requesting uh, Dr. Yin Myo Chu from uh, Bhutan to give her views. <laughs> Myanmar, Myanmar. Sorry. Good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to discuss about the cyber security in Myanmar, but my special focus is on moving forward cyber security with challenges in Myanmar. There are four main points in my uh, discussion. The first one is Myanmar and the political transition with cybersecurity impact. And the second one is legal protection on the cybersecurity in Myanmar. And the third point is there are weaknesses in cybersecurity in our country. And the final one is my humble suggestions to PIMSTEC for the cybersecurity. <coughs> today is, as we all know, that today is knowledge age, and the cyber technology and internet webs have transformed the nature of society, business community, and political life of people with profound impact, not only in my country, all over the world. In this context, almost all the governments have intensified their efforts in regulating the cybersecurity measures. <coughs> Myanmar has witnessed an extraordinary series of cyber uh, attack and cyber crime with these political changes. Most of the cyber crime trends used to be occur in Myanmar when there is inadequate defense with, uh, with the broadband uh, connectivity. Cyber crime trend in Myanmar can be seen in different forms. Business email compromise, BEC scam, targeted to the individual wire payment. Most of the uh, cases were not uh, reported in Myanmar. Phishing is another cyber crime targeting to domestic and foreign business in Myanmar. Most of the fake news are in the form of lucky draw. <coughs> There are online hate speech uh, targeting to religion and political cases. Most of the private, uh, private, most of the private uh, breaches targeted to the uh, celebrity accounts. These are the cyber trend in cyber crime in Myanmar. There are also cyber attack against the uh, network system in Myanmar, uh, together with the political implica implication. In 2007, there was a ram attack in Mizima News and Eauri News after the Sifran Revolution. Sifran Revolution is, uh, was a famous one, the Buddhist monk uh, against the, uh, the, the then uh, government. <coughs> Just ahead of 2010 <coughs> general election, which is the first election in 20 years in Myanmar, <coughs> a large scale massive attack targeted to Myanmar main uh, internet service provider, that is the Ministry of Post and Telecommunication. These attacks successfully trafficked the incoming and outgoing network. Uh, however, 
At that time, there was no official, uh, no official unit or department to inform such kind of cyber attack in Yango. <coughs> Uh, in the context of internet user, one of the remarkable uh, development is the speedy growth of members, of members of citizens with access to internet and smartphone in Myanmar. Since the opening up of the market economy, the access to internet and smartphone have swiftly penetrated into general public, which does not, which does not have access to digital device for many years in the past. The general public has fully infiltrated with the new phenomena with large flow of foreign direct investment since 2012, Myanmar have experienced a leapfrog connectivity from no connectivity, that is no connectivity community to fully con com connectivity community, which is fully embraced with digital transformation. Now 5G mobile service is introduced in Myanmar. As Myanmar had experience of zero connectivity to full connectivity, there are a number of challenges such as fake news, distorted news, low quality information, data privacy, social media uh, addition, attack on social media with unequal access to information. Let me uh, proceed my discussion on legal protection on cybersecurity in Myanmar. The claim on cybersecurity is urgent demand as cyber attack <coughs> became prominent and frequent in many countries. In the report, uh, the title, In the Ease of Doing Business in Myanmar, Major concern of foreign investor in Myanmar is strong legal protection on data security and privacy. The 2008 constitution said that unions shall protect privacy and security of home, property, correspondent, and other communication of citizens under the law subject to the provision of this constitution. Myanmar also signed Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It, al it is observing the provisions to the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights because Myanmar Human Rights Commission insisted government to <coughs> ratify this uh, international convention. The most relevant ICT-related laws are telecommunication law in 2013, electronic trans transaction law in 2014, computer science development law in 1996, and citizens privacy and security protection law in 2017. Moreover, there are particular gaps in legal framework and operation against cyber attack. The union government enacted the Telecom Law 2013 and enforced all private and public institutions to use Unicode in all communication as a first step. Today, the government, the e-governance master plan, the Myanmar web portal and national <coughs> data center are initiated by the government. The digital ID proje project is under consideration. Uh, but Myanmar formed Myanmar Computer Emergency Response Team, MNSAT, <coughs> non-profit uh, team for dealing with cyber attack in 1999. It is, like in Bhutan, it, the sub -Myanmar, sub Myanmar team is composed of five people, but they are very active and very responsive to the cyber attack. <coughs> Government uh, alone cannot solve the cyber attack, pro cyber attack problem. After 2012, the rapid development of ICT platform and freedom of expression are two major sources of violence, intercommunal, violence <coughs> intercommunal tensions. As an initial step, the government of Myanmar has provided the platform for ICT companies to tackle the extreme nature of freedom of expression. One of the provisions of Myanmar government is providing access to platform that allowed user-generated hate speech <coughs> to flourish as a first way to detect extreme use of freedom of expression. Second, government allow ICT companies to remove contents leading to the hate speech by voluntary decision making. The third <coughs> one is government requested the ICT companies to respond its request on blocking access to website, removing particular contents that may be extreme nature of freedom of expression leading to the hate speech. These are the government attack, uh, government attempt uh, based on the uh, uh, private, um, private driven <coughs> uh, cyber security attempt. At the same time, government is facing with tough position in finding the balance between protecting those who are subject to extreme form of freedom, <coughs> freedom of expression, and discouraging government <coughs> from extending restriction or regulations on the kind of extreme form of uh, freedom of expression that is criticism. 
Myanmar government worked with Facebook to appoint local censor officers in removing the hate speech and messages which are in extreme form of push and can fuel violence and communal tensions in Myanmar. Government has promulgated the cyber security and, and it is cooperating with EU initiative under the Myanmar Police Force Defense. Uh, EU, cyber, EU, expert cyber security, EU cyber security expert introduced cyber security costs to police force in handling network and cyber threat. Another one is EU Chamber of Commerce uh, Innovation uh, Advocacy suggested that the delay draft of cyber crime and electronic act, which provided protection to individual and business group and the rights of Myanmar citizens should be approved as quickly as possible since the country is being moving toward digital economy. Uh, my third point is weakness in cybersecurity in Myanmar. As cybersecurity needs multi stakeholder, that is uh, state, government, private sector, community in developing cybersecurity. <coughs> Only limited private business, uh, big private business group can have uh, access to cybersecurity measure, that is Huawei group and Mizuho group and the UNFCCR in Myanmar. Another limitation is lack of expert knowledge and awareness in cybersecurity, even though the American Center in Myanmar, Union of Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Myanmar, and the Myanmar Computer Association generate cybersecurity month in November 2019, just now. One month mm -hmm. uh, awareness campaign in Myanmar. That only ASEAN, only the ASEAN, as a regional mechanism for cybersecurity of Myanmar, with the support of World Bank, uh, ADB, and EU, provided development of cybersecurity legal framework. Uh, let me conclude my uh, discussion with my handle suggestions. As the user of digital technology and cybersecurity are the young generation, aged between 18, uh, 18 and 29. So BIMSTEC can recommend to add more university curriculum phases on cybersecurity in computer university, technology <coughs> university, and information university from their technical point of view. And at the same time, cybersecurity concept and curriculum in humanities like international relations and political science, because cybersecurity is one of the uh, current international issues in international relations. My second point is <coughs> BIMSTEC can also recommend community awareness as campaigned by the uh, civil society organization and non-governmental organization, which need momentum to generate cyber-related knowledge. There are very few CSO and NGO focused on cybersecurity in Myanmar. My third point is <coughs> BIMSA can hold a student forum on cybersecurity to enhance the attention on radicalization and extreme violence using online social media. So student is the younger, th they, they are familiar with the digital technology and cyber technology. If they have a <coughs> forum with, to share their experience, it is a good opportunity. Now mostly young students are now engaged in 5G access on mobile service by uh, Vietnamese based uh, MMC, my third group in Myanmar. So 5G network is penetrating to the young students, among the young student population. My last point is, <coughs> At the secondary education, uh, apart from higher education level, at the secondary education level, the concept of cybersecurity can be offered under the Safe School Initiative, SSI, which is uh, uh, implemented by the ASEAN and Myanmar government. Uh, so <coughs> the SSI is focused not only on the <coughs> uh, natural disaster, but uh, also on the man-made disaster. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Yin Myo Chu. Uh, I will now like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Naminda Ariel from Nepal Police to. Thank you, Chair. At, at, at first itself, uh, I would like to share one thing that yesterday in an integral function, Ambassador P.S. Raghavan, Chairman of National Security Advisory Board, notified that, said that we need one million cyber security experts that is skilled manpower to cope up with these threats that we are facing. And I thank him that he identified the need. 
Uh, good, good morning, everyone. My warm, sincere greetings to everyone here inside the auditorium. And thanks to BIMSTEC, thanks, thanks to Vivekananda International Foundation for organizing this event and giving me an opportunity to speak out something on the emerging issue and burning issue that is cyber security. Without delaying any further, I would like to go to the topic that is cyber security, need for cooperation between BIMSTEC states to counter cyber security threats. Uh, the small the definition is there. I would like to say that cyber security is nothing but to prevent unauthorized access to your system, to your device, to your infrastructure, to your national infrastructure. It's a preventive measures. Overall, the description is securing the application security, information security, disaster security, and network security. We, the current state of cyber security, we can call it cyber crime. Much is still unknown, unidentified, undefined, lack of international coherence, increasing in variety, quantity, and quality, unprecedented challenges. I will share the case study also that we have gone through. You can see this picture. There is uh, Japan, there is Singapore, there is Vietnam, Philippines, Hong Kong, India, Bangladesh. If you see the Japan and Singapore, such a robust country, they, are also the, they have also suffered cyber security attacks and they have loses millions of dollars. So we as a BIMSTEC countries cannot escape from this. If you see the cases in Nepal, these are the new three trends. There are dark net also at the, one of our panelists. Uh, I have already mentioned about the dark net. If I get time, I'll talk about it also. There's a cryptocurrency. Apart from that, we have hacking. Hacking is nothing but to compromise your entire network, your information, your data. That data can be banking and financial information. And the other one is ransomware. This is growing trend in Nepal now. Many cases are there. And the phishing, business email compromise. So see there, uh, there was a hacked in one of the A-class commercial bank that was like in bank, uh, that was like in Bangladesh. The recent is recently the ATM system was hacked. The gateway of Nepal, where the debit cards and all are there, three gateways it was attacked, and the Chinese nationals was involved. Some of the money was drawn in India also. So these are the new trends and uh, you know new threats. The hackers are in long run. We are we have, we are facing on that. So this is the case study. If you see this, on October 18, 2017, during the Deepavali. Attack, uh, attackers always look for the long, I mean, during the weekends, and if you have a long holidays, they will attack on that. There was a 31 illicit transaction were made, and uh, they succeeded 20, 22 attempts. Uh, involvement of 31 beneficiaries, attempt of 4.5 million, recovered amount was 3.5, 3.9 million, <coughs> lost amount was six, 600,000, that is it to recover. And out of 31 beneficiaries, German citizen was already involved in money laundering case, which was registered in Hamburg, Germany. So this is a capacity building. Among the BIMSTEC state members, we have to work on the capacity building to cope up with this kind of trends, this kind of attacks that we are facing every day. The examples, hackers tool, web app penetration, advanced incident response. I'm going to the point. So reverse engineering, active monitoring, and all. If we do the workshop or, I mean, interaction or capacity building kind of uh, things together between the members, uh, BIMSTEC member countries, this, this will enhance our capacity for the analysis and investigation of these cyber security threats. And key cyber security challenges. Uh, one of the panelists yesterday, Dr. Min from Myanmar, he mentioned that the challenges of local office of the social media. We talk about always Facebook, Facebook is there. There are many, Twitter, there's WhatsApp, there's uh, Emo, there's WeChat, there's Snapchat, and we, we have to talk about the email service providers also. Because yesterday, we talk about the internet and social media as a tool for the radicalization. We talk about the social media only, internet, misuse of Gmail, online portals, there are many things. 
So these are the challenges. And there is a legal challenge also, whether this media, social media, will open a local office or corporate office in respective countries of ours. So these are the big challenges. And these are challenges during the investigation of, of mutual legal assistance treaty. And during the investigation, they ask for the letter of rogatory. That is a request from the local court to the international court. Until and unless you have evidence, you cannot go to the you cannot go for the prosecution. These are the challenges we are facing these days. And the other one is the last lack of international cooperation between industry experts, regulators, academia, and international organization to address a global challenge. So this is the initiations taken by the taken by government of Nepal. Recently, April, April 30, 2019. Nepal government meeting of the Council of Ministers has approved National CERT, that is Computer Emergency Response Team. So we replaced C as IT, that is Information Technology. And that is the Information Technology, Informa Information Technology Emergency Response Team. And there is a directives and its operation and management, regulation to respond to computer and network, security incident, report on vulnerabilities and promote the effective information technology security practices throughout Nepal. Under the same communication and information technology ministry in Kathmandu, the government has established cyber security monitoring center that is in its initial phase. So I would like to, we'd like to recommend, we have to, we have, we'd like to put some recommendations on that, how to get through it. Cyber security monitoring desks in member countries. The CM, CSMD is recommended to be established within member state and national police entity. The DEX shall act as a center for technical expertise on cyber security and coordinate, coordinate cyber related activities, objectives and activities. Works as a facilitator to build working relation between member states, police cyber centers, that is P2P. Cybercrime operational data exchange with policy, cyber intelligence sharing, cyber specific treaties, extradition, regional cyber security analysis and cybercrime investigative capacity building periodic cybersecurity and cybercrime stakeholder meeting for knowledge sharing. Some few points are there, 24-7 cybersecurity info points, data exchange policy, recommending focal person, like NCV Interpol we have, assigning a focal officer with CF CSMD database <coughs> access. The conclusion, BIMSTEC member countries need cooperation, a very good cooperation. We need to work out on that to mitigate the following challenges. The first one is jurisdictional challenges. As you know that cyber crime or cyber security, we have seen all the incident, all the crime trends. Cyber crime or cyber security challenges is a transborder, transnational, cross-border, you can call it transborder. So the other one is substantive law challenges. The other one is procedural law challenges. The last one is the safeguard challenges. So we talked yesterday, uh, one of the panelists, Professor Khan, he talked about one topic that's dark net. I would like to say something on that because dark net is already entered our countries. The things happen inside the dark net is drug smuggling, weapons buy and selling, assassination, we call it Supari, assassination. The other one is the pedophile. The other part of the dark net is all transactions been done in Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is illegal in Nepal. You see the challenges. And we have already come across all these threats. So we need more cooperation. We need a lot of capacity building workshop. So last but not the least, cyber security is everyone's responsibility. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your patience and kind attention. Have a good day. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nabinda Aryan, and for keeping to time. I will now request uh, Dr. Subhimal uh, uh, Bhattacharji, our last uh, but uh, not the least uh, panelist, to give his views. So, Subhimal, 10 minutes. Respected Chair, Dr. Bajaj, fellow panelists, delegates from BIMSTEC countries, friends here, uh, Director VIF, uh, General Malik, 
This is a room here where we have two of the pioneers of cybersecurity policy making in this country. Dr. Arvind Gupta, Director VIF, has been one of the foremost persons early in the 2000s, much, much early when initial round of cybersecurity policy making has been happening in this country. And after two decades, whatever has evolved, a lot of contribution uh, Dr. Uh, Gupta has. So I really want to thank you, sir, for all the work you have done. Of course, Dr. Bajaj as our first DG cert and all his associations and engagement of uh, these decades. Uh, brings us to a point where today we are uh, about uh, 470 million uh, internet users in the country, about 36 or 37 percent of our population. So we are still a young nation, I would say, as far as uh, netizens is concerned, and there's still a long way to go. And as this uh, journey continues, uh, we are uh, visited with many issues, good and bad. Bad, of course, uh, brings us to the foremost point of looking at cybersecurity far much more closely in terms of policy interventions, in terms of systems and institutions in place, and in terms of building uh, best practices that uh, citizens, institutions, and even government has to follow. So India's uh, journey in these last uh, two decades are a little bit over that in uh, the whole realm of uh, cybersecurity and related uh, capacity building and everything has been, I would say, a fairly good one, a consistent one, and something that has uh, uh, evolved and has not been seeing uh, something, you know, uh, not keeping pace with the times or the requirements. Now, needless to say, all of you understand uh, that, you know, hackers always are finding uh, new ways to get into networks, uh, uh, new forms of crimes are evolving. What we had uh, two decades back till today, there has been a lot of evolution, a lot of mutation, and it continues. Uh, even today, we are uh, facing situations where we are thinking that even encryptions can be broken or encryptions can be played around with and hence uh, our vulnerability in all this time hasn't gone away despite all the uh, you know uh, practices that we have put despite all the equipments <coughs> and patching or any other mechanism that we put from a technical perspective but nevertheless this is a game that one has to always uh, remain engaged and it's a very very dynamically evolving network and it's something that today one cannot wish out away from. So whether it's uh, you know, business, whether it's governance, everywhere the impact of the networks, the engagement uh, that citizens and uh, consumers uh, use the network, that's going to remain, that's going to increase. And as I say, you know, we are far much more uh, evolved as digital citizens, possibly what we would have been uh, a decade ago. So it brings us also to this point, like if you look at the BIMSTEC countries as fellow panelists have shown uh, the lady from Bhutan and uh, Myanmar about the size of the networks and individuals even in uh, cybersecurity actual assignments. And of course fairly relatively and very dynamic uh, networks in Bangladesh as well as in Nepal and of course India and Thailand, uh, two countries that have uh, far much a preponderance in cyberspace. I would think that uh, Right now, maybe we are at a, a varied level of uh, capacity, varied level of uh, expectations and understandings, but the scope for cooperation and uh, making it into a kind of a, uh, something that becomes an annual feature, something that becomes of a regular feature in terms of understanding what we can do together, I don't think that <coughs> goes away. The NSS meet of BIMSTEC last year in July, I think that that's absolutely a very brilliant idea and I think we have uh, evolved from that. We have moved into some sectors which we feel are very critical to contemporary uh, discourse of governance and cooperation. Now, specifically coming to the cybersecurity sector and if you look at the three points that have been given even in this uh, document in which we could look at, the first was around the capacity building or, or 
what around the critical infrastructure, what all can be done, or is there a scope to look at? The second was around the CERT, and the third was if there is a kind of a sub-institutional mechanism uh, in place for that. Now, in the first place, uh, I would think that a lot around the critical infrastructure, whatever uh, has happened in India, even from an institutional and, of course, policy making, I think that is something that uh, we can share and we should be able to guide many of our, uh, you know, BIMSTEC uh, member countries. The whole aspect of how, you know, our CERT evolution has happened, how this CERT has been performing, the whole uh, activity around our NCIIPC, National uh, Critical Infrastructure Protection Center, or even the NCCC, uh, National Cyber uh, Coordination Center. I think these are three institutions over a period of time. Uh, they have evolved. They have been able to encapsulate the emerging scenario, and that's something that even in your fledgling situation or wherever you are, there's something that we could look at from an institution, bringing an institutional harmony around the BIMSTEC region about what institutional mechanisms can look at these aspects. If you look at the sensitive networks, the government networks, or, or, or networks that you would still want to keep them away from a uh, security and a law enforcement perspective, and, and if you look at what could be from for a common citizen perspective, I think there are scopes to look at them even separately and evolve a certain kind of a cooperation. Uh, for example, let's even take the case of Thailand. Now, I know India has uh, cert to cert cooperation uh, active agreements with uh, Bangladesh and Thailand. And Thailand is one of the most uh, e-commerce, uh, I would say, uh, active nation in this BIMSTEC region. They are at almost 63% uh, of their e-commerce uh, trade happens now through e-commerce. Ours is somewhere around 20 to 22%. But the scope of e-commerce, again, uh, is uh, you know something that will grow. So what is a capacity building around e-commerce? That's something we could uh, take lessons from both uh, Thailand and even ourselves. Cert to cert cooperation. Now, well, CERT functions uh, by far, you know, remain giving uh, the advisories and responding to incidents as and when they happen. Uh, I think whatever agreement we have with uh, Bangladesh as well as with uh, Thailand, we have engagements uh, that happen. But maybe with all the other countries, uh, we could uh, look at a mechanism by which CERT to CERT cooperation happens almost on a regular basis. Uh, thinking of a separate CERT for BIMSTEC possibly might be uh, not necessary at this stage. Looking at the fact that, you know, uh, the AP CERT or first in all this, uh, most of our BIMSTEC members are also members. But I would think over a period of time, as and when the volume of activities increase and all, even something of that we could look at. Now, what could be the deliverables which can go out? One, of course, is that uh, uh, the skill building, the skills around cyber capacity building, I think that is something that is not low end, but it is something that is very, very important. If you are looking at figures of you know, 1 million or whatever within your country's framework you look at, I think taking the experience from uh, uh, what has already happened and and the kind of uh, support uh, or, or an ecosystem where we have private sectors and many of the you know companies involved in skilling up and helping people to bring up uh, them up to a commensurate scale that is something that we could look at to do in a common fashion this is something that could be something that uh, could be a very good first step second the awareness building around uh, cyber security and capacity building and what are good practices i think you know this is something that is very essential within your own country and overall as a globe some of the best practices almost remain the same someone mentioned about passwords now you know the way you define or the way you kind of put your password that's uh, something you know how you should not be putting some few you know or you shouldn't be making some basic mistakes which anyone does now these are something that if you put across it goes in 
all of you see in India we have when in the cigarette packets we have something called you know cigarette smoking is injurious to health. Nowadays we add some very uh, difficult pictures to see also. Lucky I am not a smoker. But what I am saying is that despite seeing that a lot of people smoke and at the back of their mind they have it you know maybe I am not doing the right thing you know yes no smoking is not good and all. So similarly something of a campaign around how I should be careful with my basic cyber habits so that I build up a cyber hygiene. I think something that can be very popular and also help in evolving cooperation. And thirdly, that I feel can uh, go out from India. I think fantastically CERT India has been running something known as the Cyber Swachata Kendra. That's a part of our Digital India campaign. Uh, we are having this malware and botnet uh, removal and uh, cleaning centers that are coming up in a large scale. I think th that's something that uh, we are definitely willing to cooperate with uh, most of the nations and all. And this is something that you can take from us and set it up across the BIMSTEC network. So with these three things I would want to leave. I would feel that we are right at the time to be talking very specific on uh, capacity building around cyber security. Of course, social media and all has been dealt with yesterday. And as we are in Vivekananda International Foundation and we have the great Swamiji there, I would end with a quote of his. He's, he has very well said, arise, awake, and stop, need the goal is reached. So let us set a goal for ourselves, for Beamstech. how do we look at cyber? And then, you know, set up a goal and reach that goal. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Subimal. Uh, I think the panelists have made uh, excellent points and tried to address uh, what was uh, set up as the theme. Essentially, what practical measures should be taken to build uh, BIMSTEC cooperation in cybersecurity? And secondly, what role can think tanks play? So we've all agreed that uh, as we expand into cyberspace, the attacks will continue and will continue uh, with more speed and I think more venomous and uh, the way data can be washed away in one go. Fake news can be spread and uh, so on. And these are challenges which all of us are facing. And these are no different simply because we happen to be in BIMSTEC or Asia. It doesn't mean that we are less exposed to crimes, probably more than the uh, Western world. Because we are leapfrogging and moving on, trying to cross one generation as we did in uh, uh, for example, the mobile phones have created uh, a lot of opportunities. People have gone onto the internet in uh, China, India, and our entire region. And I was seeing that uh, the population of BIMSTEC is 2.65 billion in the brochure that you have put out. So we have uh, moved from one generation to the next, bypassing one completely. So we have not looked at the landlines for connecting onto the internet and mobile with high speed and moving to the 5G. So which means our vulnerability increases more and more. And more so after listening to all the panelists that the awareness is not there and that the capacity to handle crimes is not there. And our linkages across uh, law enforcement agencies is missing. AMLAD process is very difficult whereas all the servers are Facebook, Google, and all they are sitting in the US. So all these big challenges, and uh, uh, shocking as it may be, Bhutan, as uh, uh, the panelists mentioned, that we have uh, a five-member team which is doing ICT as well as security. Whereas the norm that we say, that is uh, an infrastructure team in an organization should be independent of security. It's like audit doing the accounting. Audit has to be independent of accounting, otherwise they will never know what the mistakes are. So here we have uh, on a much bigger scale the problem. That is ICT infrastructure as well as security. And uh, it is one may not even know what is actually happening. So I think these are unique challenges which we have. And in BIMSTEC we have an opportunity of uh, working together and taking forward. because. We don't have to grow cybersecurity professionals in large numbers. It is that the basic key is information sharing. I think the key element which we have to see 
is that uh, can we share information on threats and vulnerabilities? And uh, the attack patterns that we are seeing, can we handle that? We have seen in the case of uh, Bangladesh, unfortunately the uh, governor of Reserve Bank of Bangladesh was sacked. And before that, target company CEO in the private sector uh, had uh, faced the same music two years before that. So it is that uh, the level of vulnerability is uh, much bigger, but then the methods of handling remain the same. Information sharing uh, uh, across certs and across other agencies. So can we think of uh, building in BIMSTEC a method of cooperation through think tanks or through private sector is uh, something that uh, we will have to see. And I think it's a great initiative started uh, uh, by Dr. Arvind Gupta and the way the panel has been picked up. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, pose some questions and see whether we can come at uh, some plausible answers and uh, uh, is some kind of a concrete suggestion to take forward in terms of uh, working of us together. So with this, I'll open the floor uh, for discussion and questions. We have still about uh, nearly 20 minutes. Yes, gentlemen there. Uh, I'm Major General P.K. Malik, retired. I've got a question and two comments to offer. My question is to uh, Bangladesh. You know, the Bangladesh Central Bank, what happened, uh, things have gone. Could you get some money back? And second is, exactly who got this money? Now the money trail has gone somewhere. Who got that money? You, people say about North Korea and all, but uh, there were a lot of, those days there were a lot of things were talked about. Now, uh, the forensics and all has come up, international bodies are there. So just want to know if you know who exactly got that money. It's a huge amount of money. Second. Uh, comment, sir. You see, uh, the uh, the culture in these beamstack countries is almost the same. The problems are almost the same. Maybe the scales are a little different. Uh, two issues I want to highlight. One is the encryption policy. Now, there is a debate between, you know, the concerns of security agencies for cyber crime, cri not cyber crime, crime and as well as you know, uh, the security aspects, the uh, terrorism and all those things. At the same time, the other end of the spectrum, uh, you know, human rights, right to property and all, prop, uh, right to privacy and all. How do you balance this, this problem with, with everybody? Problem is, people are going to end-to-end -end -end encryption and trying to wash their hands off big companies. What happens? Apple says, we'll talk, we can't do. FBI, get, it, get hold of somebody, probably from Israel or somebody who make it. If Snowdown had not come, we would not have known what USA was doing. The, uh, as the chair has mentioned, all these big companies, they have got their servers there, they will get it. NSA will get it, whether you like it or not. But what do you do? And this problem is everybody. Same problem with the data security. We want the data to be deciding, uh, we are under tremendous pressure from USA. Because data is oil, data is money. And this will happen to everybody else also. We as India, because we are the biggest market and would be the biggest market in this, we can flex our muscles somewhere where we have to Blackberry. We are taking FB uh, for Facebook to do certain things. May or may not come up, but we are putting. But smaller countries may not, be able, may not have that power of that market to do it. So is there any scope of all these countries getting together and on the same platform, like your encryption policy even in Europe? Germany is going to the encryption side, UK, US is going to the other side. So there are huge differences. But can we get together in these two very important issues? There are other issues, but I'll leave it, leave it at that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'll request uh, uh, Mr. Abu Yusuf to respond to the first one. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, from Bangladesh Bank to uh, the uh, had, had Hackers requested to Federal Reserve Bank of the USA. 30 requests were there <coughs> to send money to a bank, Bank of Rijala. It is in Philippines. So uh, they made 30 requests, but only they approved two requests. Uh, other 20 it was not approved by the Federal Reserve Bank because they made some spelling mistakes. 
for this reason 28 requests were not approved then uh, when us reserve bank found this anomaly they suddenly they informed the bank uh, bangladesh bank as well as uh, bank of philippines but it is said that the money from the bank they send it to a, to the casinos of the philippines and in uh, philippines casinos are very free so anyone can invest money there there is no question where from this money is coming so it is said that the, in that way they have transferred money to other places so it is not discovered exactly who is the beneficiary of this money but at the same time the government is trying to return some of the money from the bank of reserve and there is a case is going on in philippines regarding how philippines bank manage the situation why uh, the uh, official of the bank also called by the court that how uh, that lady she how she uh, manage the issue so it is also a case is in the philippines bank but exactly who is the beneficiary of the money is not yet discovered and uh, okay it is one fortunately they made some mistakes in a spelling that uh, protected at least 1 billion dollar money from for bangladesh bank secondly the issues are you have mentioned about the encryption uh, it is also as you have uh, talked about the european context germany and the way you and france is dealing the issues but i think there's uh, there is a uh, in every regional cooperation or uh, in every regional framework leadership is also very important who leads the issue among the countries um, if we talk about if we consider for the development activities in terms of technological development as well as other developments so um, uh, we need to facilitate technology it is agreed but at the same time how to managing the framework there is also some leadership is necessary in the case of eu mainly i would say germany as well as france is leading the issues at the same time they are taking the uh, other countries in this uh, aspect uh, so i think in case of bimstick also um, some country has to come with leadership it is not the bigger country or the smaller country rather who has more uh, expertise on the issues of technology that would be important thank you sir yeah. any other comment can i add more on yeah. that so are you asking about the encryption related to the crime that is ransomware no no no, no. no right okay if it is ransomware encryption and decryption is uh, related to the ransomware because they encrypt the hackers encrypt the data they bargain with the organization on until and unless you pay they won't decrypt the data and hand up to you and hand it over to you. So the, the challenge in this is that they ask for the money in terms of Bitcoin. So this is the big challenge. Thank you. I think, uh, General Malik, if we get into this, pardon my saying so, this will will move off the track really. So we can have the discussion separately. Because uh, I know what you are getting at. The problem is genuine. But then I'll leave you with one sentence only. When Lessig wrote the book, Code is the Law. So it is coming to that in the world today. That is Code the Law. In fact, I was talking to Dr. Gupta the other day. That there are many problems in the world today which are untractable. So we have to, we have to handle them to minimize. At the same time, yes, the market part is something which India as a country has to definitely consider. So we'll talk about it separately. Uh, any other? Yes, please. Uh, Dr. Gupta. No, no. Okay. We have a rule here. Go according to the sequence, the way you have raised yeah. your hands. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter who, please. Yeah. No, 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 please. no. Yeah. Okay. A uh, uh, couple of points, basically. Uh, one is on the issue of encryption. Uh, the major problem is, as I was stating yesterday, that uh, the barrier of uh, literacy is over. So anybody can get into encryption and de de uh, de decryption. So which means the problem is much more acute than ever. Because uh, initially we used to think that you need to have certain skills to encrypt and decrypt. Now you don't need that. Because even with your uh, facial recognition, you can do whatever you want to do. So which means the whole idea of the legal makeup that we had in our ICT Act and everything, even six months back, is 
becoming l relatively obsolete. And we do not know where this legal framework head will head to in next five years of time. So that's the number one problem. The second problem with the whole thing is the demography. Now the demography's attitude toward internet is completely different than the attitude that you saw six months back. So all these information are there. The problem remains for BIMSTEC is not that there will be any kind of consensus. Of course, there will be consensus. Now the problem is when you deal with Facebook, when you deal with Apple, when you deal with uh, Samsung or perhaps even Huawei, whether they're going to share their data with you or not. So henceforth, we all may agree that we will share our information and data, but the core data that you require from Facebook will not be given to you because of their law. Because they're liable to the American law, they're liable to the European law. Henceforth, getting access to those law will always be a problem. So for BIMSTEC, as I mentioned yesterday, first job is we have to have our own standards to be set and then accordingly we can go and bargain with all these issues. Otherwise, why would Facebook be coming to Bangladesh or perhaps if they deal with India, may not be willing to deal with Sri Lanka by saying that these are the problems we have in dealing with them. So therefore, we have to have our certain standards and then go for <coughs> the uh, uh, negotiations and so so. And one issue is uh, the propaganda that we've been talking about, the fake news. The fake news has become such a problem if the fake news is sponsored by the state, now then again we have to have a standard. Now standard in a sense whether the state will have the, uh, have the uh, responsibility in determining what is fake and what is not fake. Now even if you uh, take Bangladesh's case with Myanmar or Myanmar's case in Bangladesh, you get to see a number of fake news uh, circulating. Now how do we deal with it? Had we been able to create some sort of norms, standards within the beam stack, probably would have had better discussion among the nations and come up with a solution for this sort of thing. What is today between Bangladesh and Myanmar can be tomorrow between Sri Lanka and India, can be something between Thailand and India or something like that. Because uh, internet domain is so fluid that we can always think about the transnationals coming into the system from some remote areas which we cannot be able to track. So therefore, again, uh, going back to the very core is that how we create the norms and standards for our social, political, as well as institutional behaviors towards the, uh, towards the cyber security as well as cyber system. Because information is not a problem, but having access to information from Facebook, those who would be adhering to the European laws, adhering to the American laws would probably be a big, big trouble. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Gupta. Thank you for these presentations. And I think uh, what came out very clearly is that uh, we face uh, very similar uh, challenges. That is one. And secondly, it is also nice to see that all the people in this uh, panel and earlier panels also, we begin to things like BIMSTEC. So that means the problems are common and there could be some discussions across uh, the uh, countries on how to uh, resolve these problems as a BIMSTEC. I think that's a, a good uh, uh, beginning. But let me come to uh, cyber security. Now, uh, Radhika mentioned about the, uh, the weakest link, mm -hmm. which is uh, the password and the ordinary, I think that is also a very serious problem. And right up to the issues of standards and encryption and, uh, you know, so there's a whole uh, gamut of uh, problems uh, to be solved. And frankly, there are no solutions even with others. I mean, to think that the BIMSTEC will come out with some solutions, because these are not BIMSTEC related problems. These are across the world, etc. But I think what BIMSTEC can, BIMSTEC can do is bring that specificity regional specificity and which is uh, you know distinguish itself from the others because every region has its own unique problems and so on so looking at the scale of the problems and uh, the huge uh, work that needs to be done i don't think it can be done by just one cyber security workshop or 
uh, some para tucked in the, uh, you know, uh, the summit uh, meeting, etc. Probably we do require a, a BIMSTEC wide cyber security forum, uh, which uh, includes uh, both technical people as well as uh, the people from, uh, you know, uh, policy side and so on to discuss these problems uh, regularly. So uh, the, I think the cybersecurity workshop had also made a recommendation. I saw those minutes, uh, which was in 2018, that there should be cert and cert cooperation. I think that's a very good uh, beginning. And C was mentioned by uh, Subhimal. So there are some technical institutions. So there is one is the technical uh, cooperation. Other is the law enforcement agencies, the nodal points, and, uh, you know, uh, and then standards uh, was also mentioned which takes us uh, into the realm of, you know, dealing with this whole issues of data, et cetera, and also. But standards is, whether BIMSTEC can make its own standards is a, uh, in a question mark. It's not uh, very uh, easy because standards and similarly norms also. Even at the level of UN and when you have the UN uh, group uh, of governmental experts, they have been able to discuss only 11 norms so far that they have come out. So there's a huge debate which uh, goes on. So one is whether the BIMSTEC can, of course, we should discuss these problems, but, uh, whether, but whether we can come up with specific solutions is a question mark because of the nature of the cyberspace. But what we can do is, and again, this came out in your discussions, is this capacity building and, uh, you know, the, the simple things uh, first, which also we are not able, able to address. So I think any long journey will begin with the first step. So my suggestion would be two or three. One is that we should recommend that there should be a BIMSTEC uh, cyber security forum Forum. of experts and policy makers, which should become a as important, uh, 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 you know, uh, BIMSTEC institution as any other, because this is, as you yourself pointed out, this underpins everything that we do today. So, so that all these uh, issues can uh, be uh, discussed there. And if they want, they can look at, you know, special working, uh, working groups, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and this should be a continuous uh, you know, thing. Second is uh, the capacity building, skills, uh, trainings, etc. This I think we should uh, start immediately. Uh, like yesterday, we mentioned in some other context about say thousand schools can be chosen where uh, you know issues of climate change, etc., can be. Similarly, I think we should uh, link up uh, our efforts and see whether. This awareness, skills, training, etc., in some specified areas, specified regions, schools, or other institutions, curriculum, universities, we should immediately start that uh, effort. It should not be very difficult to do that. I think that is the uh, second uh, uh, point. And uh, let me see whether I had. Huh. And I think we should also, for the law enforcement agencies, we should immediately set up the nodal points, uh, that uh, focal points that you uh, mentioned, so that the law enforcement uh, work can be done. And then this uh, BIMSTEC forum can start discussing as to how to uh, move forward in um, uh, other areas. Just last point here. You see, there are many uh, regional forums which are already working. And the Europeans have their, you know, they look at uh, uh, cyber security. Uh, the SEO also has something, EPSERT was uh, mentioned. So there is a necessary, so the regionalization, regional experiences are very important. Like this uh, uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, experience, this should be discussed by BIMSTEC countries. I mean, others are also discussing, but since we are in the region, we must uh, strengthen. So our banks should have uh, got together and started discussing this. We are discussing Bangladesh experience probably in Europe or somewhere else, but we are not discussing it among ourselves. So all the, similarly, you know, the attacks on the critical infrastructure, for instance, which happen all the time. This can be discussed, and once you have these cert to cert forums or some of these technical forums, these things will automatically come because everybody would be tracking. And triple C, you mentioned, vulnerability threats, vulnerabilities, etc. These are not very difficult, except that we have talked but not acted on this. So as first steps, which are doable, low-hanging fruits, we should suggest that they should be brought in and immediately set up a BIMSTEC uh, <coughs> cyber security forum. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, gentlemen. After him. Thank you. Uh, I, I thought that I would share further information with regard to the uh, cyber 
uh, attack that has actually happened with Bangladesh Bank, and maybe then I'll put my comment on the issue of uh, cyber security. Uh, what Bangladesh Bank is, uh, since uh, did was filed a um, uh, civil suit in New York uh, court claiming damages uh, from the Rizal Bank. And the suit is now going on, and perhaps we will see some development there. And uh, Bangladesh government also been trying uh, through the uh, state relationship with Philippine to take action uh, against those who are the perpetrators and also seek compensation uh, from them because the, uh, the Philippine government has also actually uh, filed criminal cases against them. So perhaps this is a one instance where actually calls for the uh, cooperation, the need for the cooperation and how this sort of uh, incident actually could be prevented uh, through cooperation because rather than waiting for for the events to happen, then Bimstek country could perhaps uh, actually uh, uh, take remedial measures or preventive measures right now. And that brings me to the, uh, um, uh, the, con uh, the topics of today's discussion of the cyber security and need for cooperation. Actually, the, when we talk about cyber security, there are two aspects of it. The way I see it, one is actually from the state's perspective, another is from the citizen's perspective. When, when citizens are actually talking about cyber security, it's, they are talking about the security of their personal information, security of, of the, or about the right to privacy, which, for example, in, even in India has been declared as part of the fundamental rights. And in Bangladesh, our constitution provides for the privacy of correspondence to be part of your fundamental right. So the importance of that from the, from the citizen's perspective is to actually not to be disturbed, but if you look at uh, from the state's perspective is that it's opposite to that because the state wants to know what their citizens are doing and thereby actually uh, make sure that the citizens are not having so, so much of security that they cannot even penetrate. And that is why the tension is always there between uh, these encrypted uh, service providers and the law enforcing agencies that uh, they want to actually ex uh, take access to and the others are denying. And how these two aspects can be actually uh, uh, balanced and, uh, and at the same time these people are given the adequate security that they do not feel vulnerable while using the internet and at the same time the, uh, the states are actually uh, not feeling helpless that they cannot actually uh, perhaps you know a quote unquote ifs drop to find out who is actually going, going to do any mischief and how in real time uh, the uh, BIMSEC uh, uh, nations can actually help each other in achieving that goal. Thank you. Thank you. And we will have one uh, last comment or question here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bajaj. I'm supporting to Dr. Khan and Dr. Gupta. <coughs> here we are talking about the security, regional security, bank security, every security. I think myself, the security sh should be at home. Mobile has penetrated our houses. They have destroyed the families. The use of our mobile as an information is destroying the society even. I praise uh, Radhika from Bhutan. She has very nicely expressed her views about the awareness in the schools. As she said, the bacha chalna nahi aata, usko mobile to pehle aaye. Usko sabse pehla demand to kya chahiye beta? Mobile chahiye. Update mobile. This is the requirement of every house, which is destroying the society even. Moral education is not there. Everyday use of mobile is affecting the every efforts in their study in their seriousness. So this forum should think very seriously about the penetration in the houses. First you save your, yourself, your relation with the wife, your relation with your family members. Then you meant fa whole family, then society, then community, and then nation. So awareness, as Dr. Bazaz also highlighted, the importance of awareness at the every level. So this awareness, how we can attain, how we give awareness to our children, 
how he gives awareness of the top level official, those who are holding a responsible seat in their countries. So it is very much emphasized the awareness should be at every level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I think I need not summarize. We have already agreed that information sharing awareness is the key. How do we handle it through a forum which is ongoing is something we will have to work out. And maybe in the uh, last session, valedictory session on how think tanks should cooperate, we will take that up. So with this, once again, I'd like to thank all my panelists for making excellent presentations and highlighting the points which deserve working at WIMSTEC level. And to uh, uh, VIF and Dr. Gupta in particular for organizing this particular very, very important session. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will now have uh, a very short break uh, for 10 minutes uh, till 11.45. Uh, Tea is uh, being served at the porch on the ground floor. We re request you to be back quickly. Uh, and meanwhile, we will set the dice. If any of the panelists from the next session have a PowerPoint, you can share with us. <laughs>